This session take a quick look at the Corel Draw interface. First thing we want to take a look at is the fact that we've got a mouse and a cursor here, and working in the interface of Corel Draw, obviously the first thing we do is we can left click on any object and select that with a left click. One click will select any object in Corel Draw. And we can also click off into our workspace and we won't have anything selected at all. One thing that you want to pay close attention to is that we do have a contact context sensitive pop-up menu off of a right click. If I click on any object or on the workspace, I'll get a pop-out from my mouse click, as you can see here. And I'll have different options or different features and functions of the application available through that right mouse click. Here I've clicked just in the workspace, and we've got things relating to the workspace along with paste, copy, etc. If I had something selected, I'd have copy. If I select a vector object, right click, now I get break curve apart, and other information relating or things I can do with that object off of this right mouse click. If I click on a bitmap object, right click on that, we get edit bitmap and other features and functions, as I said, the standard copy, paste, delete, etc. Down here at the bottom of the workspace, we have what's known as the status bar. You'll want to watch that. You'll notice that that will change or update. Right now, I've got this little bitmap graphic selected off of my A here. If I come over here and click on another bitmap graphic, that's a monochrome on layer one. And it'll give me information about that. Now, because that's a monochrome bitmap, it has color properties associated with it. But if I click on a RGB bitmap, you'll notice that that doesn't have color properties associated with it. Monochrome bitmaps are different. They have different properties or characteristics associated with their pixels than those of your RGB bitmaps. If I click on a vector object, I'll see that I have curve on layer one. I can see my fill color and my outline color. One thing we'll notice is down here, we can double click on the color fill and that will bring up our uniform fill dialog box. These pop-up boxes that come up in Corel Draw when you're working, they're referred to as dialog boxes and we've got them for uniform fill. If I double click on the pen outline, we get the same thing, dialog box, and I can change the properties of the outline, etc. Now there's a number of different dialog boxes that will come up when you're working with different things in Corel Draw, like bitmap effects, etc. If I take this monochrome bitmap that I've got here and let's say we Go ahead and change that to, we'll just go to bitmaps mode, and I'll select grayscale for now. If I go to effects, and actually, excuse me, bitmaps, and I go to creative and let's say crystallize, I'll get a dialog box or a pop up to create that effect with that graphic for my bitmap. So there's a lot of things we do with bitmaps and vector objects that come off dialog boxes. I'll go ahead and delete this. And that's our status bar and our dialog boxes. Next thing we've got is our page tabs here. We've got our page navigation right down here at the bottom of the page. Interesting, we can just left click on any page and we'll go to that page. And we've got some different layouts here from previous as you can see. Now, I can also add pages. If I go right click here, I'll get insert page before or insert page after. I could click on the plus signs and that would insert a page before and a page after. I can rename my page and just call this my page or whatever and rename the page and select OK and that will rename the page. I can also navigate two pages where you see here where it says three of six. I can click on that and select go to page one. And I could click OK or hit enter. And I'll go to page one as you can see there. So there's our page navigation at the bottom. We've got a scroll here. I think everybody knows what scrolls are. We've also got some rulers here on the top and the left hand side of the workspace. And you can right click on those and go to ruler setup, grid setup, etc. If I go to ruler setup, that'll bring up the options dialog box, and I could change this to millimeters. Go ahead and select cancel. It's also left click and drag out guidelines, as you see here, off of the menu. If I left click, hold down and drag, I'll bring out a guideline. Go ahead and delete that, and we'll delete the other one also. Now here we've got our toolbox, which has our pick tool, our shape tool, crop tool, etc. All the different tools in the toolbox are right here. You notice I can left click, hold down on these couple little dots here at any of these toolbars, move them around and customize my workspace with this. Above that we have a very important bar, that is the properties bar. I'm going to take a minute and we'll take a look at that. This properties bar, you notice, will change based on what I select in my workspace. If I left click on a vector object, now I'll get some information relating to my vector object that I can work with. You can see it changed the properties bar curve on connector right there. Now you'll notice it'll change even more. If I go to my shape tool and come down here and select a node, it'll change the properties that I want to edit on my lines and nodes of my vector object. 
if I go ahead and click on a bitmap object, and we'll go ahead and do that. Let's click on these icons here. I have bitmap or L O E L object, and I can actually edit my bitmap, trace my bitmap, etc. So this properties bar is very important. You want to keep an eye on that, and we'll be working with that a little bit in some of our future sessions here. Then we've got our standard toolbar, new document, open, save, print, cut, copy, paste, etc. All of it's right up here, snap to, and so on. Above that, we've got our file menu, and you want to take a look at it. You can left click, and that'll expand out. Now, you notice throughout the workspace, you'll see things with little arrows next to them. Any place where you see the little arrows, there's going to be more functions that you can get through by flying out to those arrows and that's not only here in the menus but that also includes your toolbars etc and things of that nature if I come over here to the toolbar and I left click and hold down I'll get a roll out there left click hold down pull into that little corner same thing I'll get a roll out there okay so we've got our menu here and another thing we want to look at on our menu is that sometimes things will be grayed out for instance I've got a vector object here and if I go to effects, add perspective, that's available. I could add perspective to that object. However, if I click a bitmap, and I go to effects, you'll notice that add perspective is grayed out. It's not available. So I can't add that effect to that image. So the things that are grayed out means you can't apply those effects. And the next thing that we'll want to take a look at here is going to be our dockers which are over here to the right you can see a couple of arrows here and you can click and that will expand your dockers out here these dockers there's a number of them available you can go to windows and dockers and see all the different dockers that are available in the workspace everything that's in the workspace you can move it around drag it drop it and customize it if I left click on hints here at the top drag that and move that that'll move my dockers now if I want to separate hints from the object manager I could left click hold down just the tab and that'll move that now, if I want to tuck this in my workspace, I just need to bring that over, and right about when I hit the color palette, you'll see that it'll change. I release that, and now this docker is on the right. If I left-click and drag this docker over here, I'll have this docker on the left, and I'm starting to customize my workspace based on where I'm putting my dockers. So the workspace is highly customizable. All we need to do is where we see our tops here, we can go ahead and click arrows, and we can expand and contract from the top to the bottom here, or left to right, as you can see there. Also, we have here a color palette. I can left-click and drag that out into my workspace and then scroll through that, just left-click and hold down. I can change the size of these things just by left-clicking in the bottom right-hand corner and then moving that, and it'll actually change the size and shape of my color palette. Go ahead and tuck that back in. I can do the same thing with my toolbars, too. I've got this set up, and it's going down horizontal here. If I want to change the shape of this toolbar, just wait till my cursor changes there, and I can bring this up and change it to a shape like that and put it in my workspace. Let's say... I was personally more comfortable working with it down here. I could place it down here. So we want to keep in mind that we've got our right mouse click and a lot of toolbars, features, and functions that we can customize in our workspace when we're working with the CorelDRAW graphics application. Also, we'll take a quick look at Photo Paint here. Much the same. I can move the toolbars and dockers around and customize everything the way I want it to be in my workspace. And obviously, my menu and things like that are changed based on what's going on with the bitmap objects but we'll notice that what we have in effects here in photo paint if we go into draw and let me just click on a bitmap here and we go to bitmaps we'll notice that a lot of those effects are available directly in CorelDRAW very powerful functionality in the CorelDRAW workspace for bitmap or raster type graphics so we'll wrap up here with our initial introduction into the CorelDRAW interface or workspace and we'll continue in our next session